Now, you really can't start a discussion about SQL Server without talking about authentication modes first. So let's get this out of the way. Authentication modes can be confusing because it looks like there's two different ways to connect to SQL Server, and in fact there are. You can do Windows authentication or SQL Server login authentication. Now, once we get authenticated, then we've got to do something else. So let's, let's take it a step at a time here. First of all, let's look at Windows authentication. I just want to give you a little graph here, a little illustration. With Windows authentication, let's think about what's happening. Now, we've got users out there who log in to Active Directory. Well, if Active Directory has already determined, number one, who this user is, number two, what capabilities they should have on the network, what resources they can access, well, we've already authenticated them, right? So why should SQL Server have to go through that process all over again? So in Windows Authentication, basically we're going to map groups from Active Directory onto SQL Server. And basically, SQL Server gets into a trusting relationship with our Active Directory domain. So now, based on group membership right here in Active Directory, we allow certain groups to be able to have certain permissions on SQL Server. Now keep in mind, this is the first step of SQL Server security, because the first thing we've got to do is connect to the SQL Server box. The second thing we have to do is determine what databases on the SQL Server box this user can get to. We'll talk about that later. So in Windows Authentication, we tell SQL Server, look, if this user is a member of a certain group, then bring them on into SQL Server without having to re-authenticate them. Now, this really helps streamline security. If you're using, if you've been to Active Directory training and you've heard of AGLP, accounts going to global groups, global groups going to local groups, and we apply permissions to the local groups. Well, with that, all of those global groups that have all of our various users connected or collected there, that global group can now be mapped into SQL Server. So if this user is a member of sales, then sales automatically can log on to SQL Server. Okay, that's Windows authentication. Pretty simple. Now let's talk about another authentication mode, which is the SQL Server login. Now in this scenario, we've still got our user, and our user can log into Active Directory just like before. However, for whatever reason, and there's a myriad of them, we want our user to be able to log in directly to SQL Server. Sometimes we have users who aren't members of Active Directory. Other times we just want another layer of security. So in this instance, we're going to set up users in Active Directory just like normal, but we're also going to set up users in SQL Server. So this user is going to have a login account in Active Directory and also a login account on SQL Server. Now, get a bunch of DBAs in a room and ask which one of these is better, and you'll see a fight start. Okay, different people see this different ways. However you want to do it is fine. Just understand which one you're doing and understand why. Now let's go to the next step because this fits in with authentication modes and this has to do with database users because there really are two steps to security in SQL Server. Number one, we've got to get you on to the SQL Server box and number two, got to get you into a database. Let me show you a picture of that. So here's our user and our user is already connected to SQL Server. Now she connected using either Windows Authentication or SQL Server Login. We don't care which one. Either way, she now has a connection. She's logged on to the SQL Server. Well, on this particular SQL Server, there are three databases. Uh, HR, Human Resources, Sales, and Research. Now notice this, this login account for this lady has been assigned as a database user in HR and research, but not in sales. Now, obviously what that means is this user can go into the HR and research databases and work and only do the things that she's been granted permission on, on certain tables, store procedures, and so forth. So that's how SQL Server Security works. That's the 10,000-foot view. Now, in the next video, I'm going to go into the management console and show you how to actually set this up and change a SQL Server if you want to change it from SQL Server login to Windows authentication and so forth.